what made Houston, Houston Christian the job for you? I mean, I think there's a, a multitude of things. First off, for me, um, I was born and raised in the state of Texas. So I was a, a product of Texas high school football coach. Uh, my dad was a coach. My mom was an educator. Uh, my wife is from Houston. So before you even start talking football, if my wife is happy, Zach, we've, we've crossed a lot of boxes off right there, right? Um, but, you know, then you start looking at the university, right? You look at it, it's in the fourth largest city in the United States. Uh, at FCS level, the majority of FCS schools are in rural areas, right? Well, you have an opportunity to automatically come out and be different in that spot. And then you start to do a little bit more research in that spot, Zach, and you say, well, they've only been playing football for 10 years. And so you get that opportunity to come in and be able to uh, put your stamp on something that's an infant, infant program in this spot. Um, and then you get to be able to do it in a, on a banner with uh, you get to be able to live out your faith each and every day at HCU. And so for me, if you can take family and you can take faith and you can take football and put all three together, man, you better get on that plane. You better get back home to Texas. That, I, I love that, Coach. I mean, let's just be honest. The recruiting success speaks for itself on what you were able to implement at Campbell. I mean, back-to-back -back number one recruiting classes, top 80 classes, which is unheard of at the FCS level. Talk a little bit about bringing that recruiting strategy to HCU and applying it in a whole different location. Yeah, you know, Zach, I, I've spent a majority of my career at smaller college levels, right? And, man, you had to work your tail off. I mean, you brought in 85 guys every year. I mean, so the, the recruiting, the strain on the recruiting, man, I've been there, done that when you have to bring 85 in. You know, but the thing that was really cool, Zach, is, is that you when we went to Campbell, we took those same principles. Coach Minner was very good to me as the head football coach and allowed me to take recruiting and run with it. And the cool thing about it, Zach, is it doesn't matter if you're at the Division three, at the high school or Division one level. It still goes back to relationships and how you treat people. And I think that's what people were attracted to at Campbell is that we were able to be able to uh, – be a part and be able to make them feel like that was home for them. Um, and so being able to come back here to HCU and, and the head coach chair, that's my number one job is how they can connect with me as the head football coach. Um, the position coach may be recruiting, the coordinator may be recruiting, but I want to recruit as the head football coach at HCU. I want to recruit like an assistant coach. And I want those mamas to know who I am. I want them to be at their basketball games. And, and that's the thing that we can do here. But at the end of the day, what's the cool thing, Zach, is that relationships matter and how you treat people matter. Doesn't matter what level you you're at. You also have a history coaching linebackers, and I, I believe you have one of the best in the country in your locker room in, in, in Mr. Rodney Dansby. Talk a little bit about what he had, just his game and just being around him for these past few months, what, what his ceiling could possibly be. Yeah, well, I, I think you're dead on. I, I think he's the best linebacker in, in the nation. Um, you put up his film, um, you show how he plays the game, you show the work ethic that he puts into it, and then you get to be able to, then Zach, be able to get to know him behind the scenes like I have for the last six months. You can see how important it is to him. You can see what drives him in those spots, and you can see what makes him different. And, and you watch his film, he looks different, right? Like he plays the game at a higher speed. Um, and then you get to know him and go, those things match up, man. Like I see those pieces, um, but Rodney's been huge, right? Here's the great thing about Rodney is Rodney. And let's be honest. This is the, the world of transfer portal, right? Why in the world is Rodney Dansby at HCU? He, he could have jumped ship. We all know that piece, right? Um, but he didn't. He chose to stay for the school that invested in him and gave him an opportunity, right? We tell all these stories and we promote all these stories of transfer this and transfer that. Man, the Rodney Dansby's of the world, those are the ones that we need to be able to promote, that he stuck with his school because his school stuck with him. And I tell you what now, Zach, uh, I can't wait for him to be able to receive the things and the rewards that he's going to get for being able to do that. Coach, my final question, the, the transfer portal, again, has exploded in college football. How do you and your staff plan to balance the transfer portal, high school recruiting, and then also the junior college ranks that are throughout the state of Texas? Yeah, I think you just hit a nail on the head that a lot of people are not talking about as much as the junior college transfers, right? Um, junior college used to be a, fe a feeding frenzy for those guys, and those guys are getting left behind. And so you're getting some guys. We picked up seven guys from the JUCO um, that have played college football that are not 18 year olds um, that are going to help our football team right out the gate. Um, but for us, I mean, we, we kind of get the cheat, Zach. I mean, we're in Houston, right? And so for us, it's about bringing guys back to the city at that point in time. And so that's the first thing we look for the transfer portal is does this guy, is this guy from Texas? Number one, number two, is he from Houston? And if he is, we got to jump all over him in that spot and we get to give him an opportunity to come back home. That guy that may have left, 
Um, he gets to understand what it's like to have mom in the stands every home game when the game's over and they're there meeting him at that spot. Um, they, they get to play a little different because, man, this is their hometown. Um, our, our logo says Houston in it, man. And those guys get to represent their city. And what a great opportunity it is for them in that spot. And then you you talk about all those positives. Then you add the high school football in the, in the Houston area. I mean, we, we, we don't have to leave Houston to be able to get our high school talent in this area. We just got to make sure that they understand the HCU is an option for them and that we can offer them division one college football at a, at a high, high ceiling uh, that allows them to be able to achieve all they want to achieve. Coach, I appreciate you. I'm going to toss it to Corey. Thanks, Zach. Coach, good to see you. Corey, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Every single day, just like you, right? right yes, sir. <laughs> That's right. Hey, a lot of big things happening in the Houston Christian. I know the, the conference started out today talking about rebrand and new logo. Same with you guys. You've got a rebrand. You're now Houston Christian. You've got somewhat of a newer logo. But I think more importantly than that, you have new turf. You have a lot of things going into I mean, we'll admit it. The, the facilities weren't where you want them to be. They were a little behind. There, there's a lot of things going into that, and I'd like just to get your thoughts on how you guys continue to take those steps and, and what are some of the things that's coming next to keep improving things for the athletes. Yeah, I mean, all that you just talked about, we've made a lot of strides in six months. Um, we've made a lot of things. If you come to our campus, you're around our kids and within our program, um, it's going to look different, feel different, and all those things. Though None of those, Corey, would be possible if it wasn't for Dr. Sloan, our president. Um, Dr. Sloan, when he got to HCU, uh, he wanted to create football and add football because he knows the value and the, and the, the value that it brings to the university as a whole, right? Um, we're, we are a part of the university. We're not separate. Our job is to do what's best. We, we play football because it helps HCU and it, it benefits HCU in those spots. And so all those things that you're seeing, Corey, the, the improvements, the, the things that we're investing in our kids and our facilities, um, that comes from Dr. Sloan and Steve Maniacci, our AD. And they believe that this is the opportunity and this is the right time for us as a, a football program, but also as a university, right? I mean, you get to rebrand the university and you get to a new staff and you get to do all these things. Um, man, you couldn't ask for a better opportunity, right? Like you're right here in the middle of it, um, but it takes commitment. Um, and the thing is, Corey, is that we're going to continue to push forward. Um, this thing is never going to be able to stop. Um, facilities, we understand we've got to catch up in some facilities, right? Uh, we understand really clearly how you catch up in facilities. You win football games, plain and simple, right? Um, let's not act like we don't understand how this works. The programs that win have the most money, right? Uh, that's how this thing goes. And so we're going to invest all of our resources into our student athletes because we believe the student athletes are the best thing that we have. And in turn, Corey, we believe those student athletes are going to be different. They're going to play at a higher level. We're going to be able to offer them more resources to develop. And that's going to be able to produce a winning football team on, on that end. Um, you're in Houston, Texas. Once you, Houston loves a winner, Corey. You know that. And we can create a winning football program here. Uh, man, this, this is a gold mine. I'm telling you, it's a gold mine here at HCU. Oh, I, I agree, and and I will say that uh, they do like a winner, but I had some good arguments with some Astros fans last week at coaching school, so that was fun. You know? oh, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what other thing? I know Coach Fredenberg was big for you. He's been big throughout your life. A uh, couple questions on that. Do you, did you ever have to use the Fred sled, which is what he's now selling? And, and are you getting one from the Fred sled.com there? Well, I'll, I'll say this. I was a quarterback, right? And so uh, coach Fred didn't spend much time coaching the quarterbacks. He, he started coaching the, the defense alignment. That's his specialty. And hence, that's why he created the Fred sled in that spot. Right. And so I didn't ever get on it. Uh, thank goodness. That thing is so, so much metal in that thing. I think it might've broken me. Um, but then I'll tell you a story about this, Corey, is I told my wife the day before I went to coach school that Coach Fred was there and he's selling a sled. And she goes, you better not go see him unless you got your credit card in your pocket because you, you can't tell him no. And so um, uh, I'll just leave it at that as far as if we're getting a Fred sled or not. <laughs> that is awesome. Hey, I'm with you. I thought I needed my credit card when I went to talk to him over there. <laughs> he's the best. He's the best. Hey, hey, Coach, I appreciate you. Thank you. And also, Zach, hey, it's great to see you again, too, man. I hadn't said that yet, and I was I should have done that a couple uh, interviews ago. But, hey, I appreciate both of you guys. Thank you.